the CEO of your life in biz? I'm Emily Alderson, and I'm on a mission to elevate the beauty industry one success story at a time. If knowledge is power and seeing is believing, imagine what could happen if you expanded your mind to the possibilities. What kind of shift could you make happen? This is Stories with Stylists. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Cosmo CEO Presents Stories with Stylist. I'm very excited for our guest today. She has been at it a long time and she's going to tell us all her secrets. Welcome, Hi. Baina from Be Chic Salon. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited too. Um, I always start out with the question, where are you from and what led you to cosmetology? I am from Northern New Jersey. I work in Maplewood, New Jersey specifically, and um, I'm a second generation hairstylist. My paternal grandmother, Grandma Marie, was a hairstylist for more than 40 years. And I always say that my gift is God-given and grandma nurtured. Like that's just how it feels. I didn't have the luxury of sitting at her feet um, because she didn't live close to me, but our spirits connected. And I know that the, I know that she shared her gift with me and she was very excited and she's always been very proud of, of the fact that there's another hairstylist in the family and that it's me. So, she passed away about eight years ago now, but uh, I think of her often. Yeah. Now, how old are you when you went to cosmetology school? So I never wanted to do anything else but be a hairstylist. Yeah. I don't recall, never had another dream all of my life, I knew I would be a hairstylist. I, I got in trouble with my mom. I used her cold cream to lay my first relaxer <laughs> on my dolly <laughs> when I was a little girl. And um, I graduated from high school in 1990, in June of 1990, and I enrolled in beauty school in July. Wow. And yeah, and came out and hit the ground running. So it's been 28 years. I've loved every minute of it, the ebbs and the flows. That's amazing. Yeah. So did yeah. you grow up getting your hair done and being in the salon and that really just kind of inspired your love? It did. It, it fueled it. It kept, it continued. It, it made me want more and more. And so my mom wasn't a great, um, uh, wasn't great at doing hair. She did her very best. But what I love most about that is that she took us to get it done because she couldn't. And so I got to sit in the salons and smell the smells of the, the sheens and the sprays. And to this day, I love a good aerosol can <laughs> because it brings back those memories, you know, but yeah, I did. We, we went to the salon regularly and um, it was just always a great experience. I, I was looking around and dreaming even back then. I yeah. love that. Um, after you got out of cosmetology school, what was kind of next? Did you think I need an apprentice or what kind of salon? Did you have an idea of where you wanted to be? You know, a lot of people were choosing the apprentice route and I didn't want that. I, 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 think, I don't know if I regret it um, because I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be, but um, I didn't want that. I wanted to be, I wanted my own station. I wanted to work. I wanted to feel the hair. I wanted to get my hands in there and I wanted to learn. I was very hungry. My, my first job out of beauty school, I was actually a manicurist. Oh, I was. I was really good at freestyling um, designs on nails, and that was my very first job, but it didn't take me long to realize I didn't love it mm -hmm. enough to want to stay there. And so the next job I had was um, in a salon. I was still about 18 and a half, almost 19, and I just have not stopped. I haven't stopped. And it's, uh, I've been, I've been, uh, it was a struggle in the early years because I never had a mentor. I actually didn't have a mentor until oh, maybe six years ago. Wow. Yeah. Not in the hair industry. Mm -hmm. you know, like um, I have an aunt who is, um, my mother's sister is a life coach. And so she's been my life, my, my, my spiritual life coach for probably 12 years now. Wow. But, and she was a hairstylist, so that was helpful. So she got it. Totally. But in terms of someone that lived here or, you know, was able to pour into me in my younger years, I didn't have it. But it was okay. Yeah, I do feel like um, our industry is so unique in the way mm -hmm. that we 
communicate with our clients and connect with our clients and have to build on our own and but then we have to take money from them and you know like all of and schedule them and all these things and I think having somebody that has been through it and gets it that makes right. a huge difference it does it does but when you don't have it it forces you to grow in a different way sure. and I feel stronger I feel stronger than I think I may have felt. I, I wouldn't want to use anyone as a crutch, you know, mm -hmm. and having to, you know, just do it with uh, me and God and just hitting the pavement and just out there and feeling the losses and feeling the highs of the winds. You know, I'm where I am today and I'm still loving what I do after 28 years. Wow. That's what surprises me that I still love it so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much. <laughs> What did it look like? Because obviously you're building a clientele with it sounds like not much help from the salon you are in pre Instagram, pre all of this. So what did your days look like? How were you getting people in your chair? I'm a salon. Um, I'm a stylist from the 90s. And so everything was word of mouth. Okay. So if you were really good, then the word spread. If you were not really good, the word spread. Yeah. <laughs> so 90% of my clientele back then um, before social media was word of mouth. I mean, I do families. Mm -hmm. I do mom, daughter. I do mom, grandma. <laughs> you know, I just, I do like families and I love it. And I, I hold each of their stories in confidence. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, you, know you, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. And so they've, I've kind of grown up with them and they've grown up with me. You know, I have clients. My oldest client, Liz, is going to be 83 on, 82 on Christmas Eve. Okay. And she uh, was my client before I met my husband. Wow. And I've been married 23 years. Wow. So they've been with me a long time. We've been together a long time. Yeah. That is so amazing. And wonderful. Yeah. You um, definitely have, I mean, just going through your social media and your website and thing, creating that culture in your chair of this is your space this is your couple hours will you talk to us a little bit about your process and what's an experience like at be chic well i think that um it was something that i've always done and i didn't know i was doing it mm. it's just it's always been natural for me to want to set you at ease if you're the new girl in the room i want to make you feel welcome and included i never wanted you to feel like the new girl and so i just did my best to make you feel welcome even before your first visit. So it started with a phone call and just to, you know, hear your voice, get you to hear my voice. And so um, once, once the phone call happens, then that's, that to me, that's where the magic is because when they come into the salon, they already feel familiar. Mm -hmm. They already feel like they've met me and they, they know me. And, you know, when they're in my chair, I give them my undivided attention. I don't answer my phone. I don't answer the salon phone. I give them my undivided attention because that's what they deserve. As a, a busy mom myself, I've often given from an empty cup and it's no good. It's no good and I see that in them. And so I'm always looking to fill them up. I'm always looking to just, and I can't hug now, OMG. I, I am a hugger. Yeah. I can't hug now. But they still feel my love. They feel my energy. Um, and just, they feel my touch. I find a way to touch them. I find a way to touch a shoulder, touch a hand as I, as I walk them to the dryer. But everything is about them. Everything is about them. And I think about them in advance. I think about what they might like and I try to have it there. You know, I just, I can't tell you if I love doing hair more or serving them. Yeah. And that's really, I just love it. And so not being able to do it right now, I find little ways to still make it special for them because mm -hmm. they need it and they look for it. They're most times, you know, as a busy mom yourself, you know that um, you don't get a lot of self-care. You have to schedule it. And when, you ha when you're making your to-do list, most times you're not on that list. Right. And so I, I try to make the experience something um, that they want to put themselves on the list to come back. And they do. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is so important because like you say, like we do have to schedule time out for ourselves and something that I really love that you do. And it's so simple, but you know, you when you hear people talk about do something that sets you apart and have this guest experience, sometimes it kind of feels like I don't 
but like, what else can I do? You actually have a little note that says like, welcome to everybody that's coming in that day. And I just think that's so, I don't know, it's so simple, Mm -hmm. but to come and be like, welcome, Emily, I'd be like, thank you. Another thriver thriver was doing that. And she shared it with a few of us. Uh Um, I think her name was Takesha. And when it just, it resonated so much with me. Like, yes. Like when you go to the dentist's office, when you take your babies to the dentist, their name, their name is on the board and they, they feel so, if they can read it, they feel so welcome. And each client, even my clients, my guests who are familiar with me and have been with me for a while, when they see their name on the board, they are so excited. They just feel wanted. They feel welcome. They feel loved. And that is the goal. I think too, you know, with everything and the restrictions that we have at the salon right now, um, personal touch really is so important. And even though like this virtual connection is so amazing and we can connect all over, there is something about that one-on-one, like you see me. Right. I think that's like what you give to your clients. That's, that's what the goal is. And I, and it's not hard for me. It's yeah. not, sometimes it's, I have to pull back because I'm so touchy feely and you kind of have to, my target market lady, she loves it. Mm-hmm. But, um, sometimes you get someone in and sometimes I have to kind of break through it a little bit. They're guarded because of past experiences, but when they see that I'm authentic and not, that it's not just a show or, um, I'm not annoying, <laughs> they love it and they welcome it and they do. And they're, they're surprised that they, they're able to let their guard down and just be, I just want I've always wanted to just have a judgment-free zone. I want them to be able to share with me, you know, sometimes I can't help them, you know, sometimes it's too deep, but I refer. I, I, just, I just give them all of me. And, that, and by the end of the night, I am pooped. But I feel, I, feel, um, I feel good that I gave them everything that I had for that day. Do you have any sort of like, after work kind of rituals or things that you do to kind of separate that because it is hard when you give 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 or how do you refill your cup so i I spend a lot of time on youtube i love spiritual teaching so it depends on um what i'm feeling and what i feel like i need um i'll choose which uh, spiritual teaching or teacher for that particular moment but i do a lot of I walk now, just more recently, I've been doing a lot of um, early morning walking and I find that very therapeutic. It's quiet, the mm. birds are up and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but, the, but the biggest thing is, I feel like when it's a God-given gift that um, there's grace on it and I feel, I feel graced to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't feel burdened, I don't yeah. feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed by social media and the stuff that you have to do the behind the scenes but this part of it it doesn't burden me at all it doesn't but I but I still know that I need to um, make sure that I'm um, taking care of myself Mm -hmm. so I'm doing better with that Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I think this year with salons closing and us being forced to take a break it has it gives you pause to be like oh I could do this or I could do that or maybe I do need a little bit more. What was the closure like for you this year? You know, I'm very cautious about talking about it to my guests. um, And I kind of feel people out depending on what it was for them. So if it was awful for them, I'm not going to tell them how wonderful it was for me. (laughs) It was wonderful. Right. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. I got to catch my breath. I took naps during the day. I spent (laughs) so much time with the girls and my honey. I found out that I really like my honey. I mean, I've always loved him, but we really work well together. You know, like he's a good teammate, you know? Mm I um, learned how to make a really good cup of coffee. I worked on my social media. I did so much. I did so much. And Mm -hmm. so it was wonderful. Um, Look, I was looking forward to going back because I missed the income, but I I can't tie um, money to my happiness. Mm -hmm. I don't tie it to with clients, with guests. They... Not every guest is welcome in my chair. I really do feel them out. And if I don't think we're a good fit, which is why the consultation is so important, Mm -hmm. you know, then it doesn't go past the consultation, you know? And so the shutdown was necessary. It was a chance for me to reset that I would not have taken on my own. I wouldn't have taken it unless I was sick. And who wants to be sick? 
<laughs> to reset, you know? Exactly. It was good. Yeah, I I love that. I know. I do feel like kind of, uh, I don't know, just watching peers on social media and you, you saw all the different levels. And part of me was like, is everybody really upset about this? Because I kind of like it. Like I've never had, I've worked since I was 12 years old. I've never had a break like that outside of maternity leave, which is not yeah. a vacation. No, <laughs> it's not. Let's be clear. Uh, not a vacation. Um yeah, it was just nice to have a forced, a forced break. Right, right. And you wouldn't have done it on your own had it not been forced. No, no. no. You barely take vacation. Right. Saturdays, you said you recently started taking Saturdays off. What's that been like? Oh, boy, just to wake up with my girls. Typically, when I worked on Saturdays, I, they would be asleep when I, I started my first client, my first guest at 7 a.m. And so I was out of the house before they were awake. And then when I got off of work, I was, I'm exhausted. And so you lose a whole day. And then you just have Sunday, really, to connect. And then Monday, you're running errands, and then start, the rat race starts again. Mm -hmm. And so um, my oldest daughter, our oldest daughter is a dancer. And so um, she is looking to dance professionally. And it's been, it was difficult yeah. it was for my husband to do everything. And he is a trooper, boy. He doesn't complain, didn't complain about anything, but I was missing them. Mm -hmm. I was missing them. And I kept saying, they're going to be 12 and five, just one time. Like I'm never going to get this time again. And I didn't want to have regrets. I had a friend who um, um, was, was heavily regretful that she didn't spend the time and that burned me up for her. And there's nothing she could do about it. Right. You know? And so I just, I started about 15 years ago, taking off every other Saturday. Okay. When our oldest was born, we, I started every other Saturday. And I stayed with that for 15 years. And then last year, it was enough. Yeah. I knew that it was time because I, I was truly serving from an empty space in that particular, on that day. Mm -hmm. And they, everyone that sits in my chair deserves all of me and the happy me and the best of me. And when I felt like I couldn't do that anymore, that's when I needed to make that change. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did that conversation with the clients look like? Because I'm sure there are some that are strictly Saturday clients. A few of them were relieved. They've been with me for 24 years and they were missing their Saturdays too. They had to be up. <laughs> they were up early, you know, they work Monday through Friday and they were missing whatever, you know, sleep mostly. Mm -hmm. But there were a few people that were upset, but my girls love me and they've grown with me and they know my family and they know my heart for my family. And they don't want me to have to choose. They totally understand. They, they miss me. They miss the Saturday, um, you know, flow, but they understand and they, because they're with, they've been with me so, so long that they see the girls growing up before their eyes, Sure. you know, so they understood. They were really, really good about it. Yeah. That's so good. I know I've been scaling back Saturdays too. I, it's just funny because I think in our industry, it's just such a standard, such yeah. a standard to work Tuesday to Saturday. That? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I would watch, we had a, brought on an esthetician and she only worked Monday through Friday. And I, and that's how she built her clientele. And I thought, why didn't I think of that? You know, cause people just do, and they come in whenever you're available. So you're just not okay. available. They make time. Yeah. A client that takes off work every six weeks on a Friday and it's her, like her day and she gets her hair done and mm -hmm. she schedules her appointments around that. It's like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're both worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I, I believe that. And they, they figured out a way. We, you know, they didn't miss a beat with their appointments. They're in every week and every two weeks, and they don't have an issue. And yeah. they love it. Yeah. It works. It works. It's been wonderful. Not one complaint. And every, every Saturday morning, I'm just grateful. Mm -hmm. But all 28 years of almost every Saturday, you know? Yeah. It's a long time. A lot of big weight off your shoulders, I'm yeah. sure. Yes, and the girls and, and my yeah, husband, like, they love seeing me every day. And we now we can make plans. Now we can make plans. We couldn't make plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How do you juggle mom life, working, time with your husband? Mm -hmm. Well, we both think at date night. <laughs> we think <laughs> at it. But we look for every opportunity that we can to steal some time away from each other, not away from each other, to be with each other. Right. Um, 
our girls are bigger now, so they can stay home a little bit by themselves. So we grab lunch together sometimes. We, um, we've never been away together, mm. like on vacation without the girls. So we're coming up on uh, 24 years married next year. So I think we're going to grow up a little bit, and do something. Yeah. But, um, you know, we both come from loving families. And so the more the merrier. You know, our families are big and they're very, or the, my family is big. His family is not big, but we're all so, so connected and we connect so well. But he and I just have really good talks. We take time for each other um, at night when the girls go down and we laugh a lot. And he's just, he's a really good husband. He's a really good friend. He's a really good dad. And so it's, he makes it easier. Mm -hmm. He's our biggest cheerleader. Everyone in this house, he's our biggest cheerleader. And he encourages us and pushes us out and, um, and then cheers us on when we're out there. And, you know, he's, it's just, he makes it easier to, to be quite honest. And then with, you know, we're both spiritually connected. And so like that all together is just like the perfect fit for us and our family. I mean, I think that that work life balance thing has to be different for everyone. Sure. What yeah. works in this house won't work in your house. Mm -hmm. And you have to not allow yourself to look at outside family life balance uh, situations and create or judge yours based on that because you'll be unhappy. It has to work for you. There are no more traditional roles unless that's what you want them to be. If that's what you want, great. If it works for you, great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that is important because we try and like fit molds, especially with social media. It's easy to think, you know, what that might look, look like over there. Oh, she's got it all together over here, but you don't know. Right. right. Pretty picture is just that. <laughs> a pretty exactly. Picture. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I agree. When did you open your salon? I, I opened my salon, I think it was 2003. And I closed my salon uh, just four years ago. So I work in a commission based salon right now with a wonderful woman that allows me to run my business kind of from her business. Like she allows me to grow. She's probably the very first who um, I've worked for who really wants to see me thrive and mm -hmm. wants to see me grow and encourages me to, and, and cheers me on another cheerleader of mine that, you know, and she doesn't, um, she doesn't do what I do in the salon. And I know that I kind of stand out in the salon, not like they don't stand out, but I, you know, I work really hard on the guest experience and not everybody is in the same place with that. Um, and she allows me to do it. And she doesn't say that I have to do what they do. Okay. And she allows me and she sees how much my um, guests love what I do. And so a couple of things they pick up on, but she's just a really good, um, a really good person. Mm -hmm. What was that like just for anybody who is either thinking of opening something or feeling like maybe they've taken on more than they can handle and want to step back. Like how did you navigate going through those steps? Cause I feel like we kind of put value on this is the order of things that we have to do in order to be successful. It has to look like this. Right. And what it really does is it just has to work for you. Mm -hmm. And so I was a salon owner for 14 years. I don't think I'm done. I thought I was, Yeah. I thought I was, but it just doesn't, it won't leave me alone. It's like a nagging, and I, it gets me so excited at the thought of um, reopening another salon, but I, it will not look the way the traditional salon looks. It has to serve a bigger purpose than me, or I don't want to do it because I don't need to do it. I've been there. I've done that. I don't need to do it. I'm really happy where I am, but I feel like there's still a next mm -hmm. in me. So um, for the person who um, has always wanted their own salon, go for it. You don't want to be... You don't want to look back in five and 10 and 15 and 20 years and wish you had done it. Go for it. There will be lots of failures, but you're going to learn tons of lessons in the failures if you're open. And for the person that's feeling overwhelmed and not sure if they want to continue opening, but they don't want to look like they failed, it's okay too. You've got to do what's best for you. It, it, sometimes you have to take a step back to take a step forward. Mm. It's really how you look at it. Perception is everything. Mm -hmm. If you look at it as a failure um, and like, you're done, then you're right. But if you look at it as um, a stepping stone to your next, then you can rebuild and be better than ever. It was, you know, I've had a great run. When I had the salon, it was wonderful. But when it was time 
for God to move me on to the next level, I had to be ready. I kind of went kicking and screaming. I did. I was unsure. I was uh, questioned everything. But in the end, you have to trust your, your gut. And my gut was saying that for that particular season, that season was over. And now it's on to the new season. And now the new season like gives me butterflies in my belly. Ooh, yeah. That's so, so good. Yeah. I think that's so important. I think with anything and every relationship, be it with a partner or a friend or your business, those butterflies, that's what Yeah, they know. keep you going. Uh-huh. They keep you going when um, things aren't moving as quickly as you want them to. Um, when you feel like quitting, when you're tired or when you're overwhelmed, those blood butterflies remind you that the dream is still alive. Mm-hmm. Keep pushing, keep pushing. You'll get there. I yeah. I know you're also really passionate about continuing education. And mm-hmm. I think you said something about where you mostly fly to classes. Is that right? Whatever, you know, well, I no, not mostly, but I will. I will. And I cry on the way to the airport every time. <laughs> leaving my girl. I do. A little bit better now. A little bit better now, but I don't like being away from them, but I'm better. I come back better for everyone and I have to do it. And so I love, love, love advanced education. My grandmother, um, my grandmother continued her education. I have a plaque. We have identical plaques where we went to um, Dudley Cosmetology University in North Carolina. She went in 1990 when I was still in high school for five days of advanced training. Wow. And I went in 1999 for five days of advanced training. I love that. And the last time I saw her, I saw the plaque on the wall and I was wondering how I could ask her for it when she was done with it. I didn't want to sound morbid, right. um, but she was 87 or eight, about 87 at the time. And I just said, grandma, when you're done with this plaque and when you're ready to move, like maybe if she sold a house, um, you know, can you send this to me? Because I didn't want her to leave this earth. And then I have to find where it is and I didn't want that regret so I just I asked her for it and she gave it to me she took it off the wall that day and gave it to me I never saw her again oh my god she passed passed a year after that so I'm thankful that I have that Mm -hmm. so for my next salon or my next whatever um I have her plaque and it's going to sit side by side my plaque and I won't ever stop learning the minute you stop learning the minute you stop wanting to um find out what else is out there, you die. Yeah. Nobody stands still. You either go forward or you go backwards. Like, and Mm -hmm. I don't want to go backwards. I just, this has been the best decision I've ever made in my life, getting coaching, um, continuing my education because um, it sets you apart. It really does. People seek out the stylist that is looking to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's where I want to be. And the clients are learning now too, you know, with YouTube and Pinterest and all these things. It's like, right. you got to know what's right. going because on. Because you got to correct them mm-hmm. <laughs> because they don't always get it right. They hear it and they think this, this, you know, and a lot of times you aren't looking at real educators on YouTube, depending on what you're looking at, you know, sometimes you'll get good educators and, you know, it kind of sparks an interest in the guest to then bring the question to you. Um, but you do, you're right. They are teaching themselves. They're learning on their own. So you better be ahead of the game. Yeah. I found too um, something that was interesting while we were closed and clients were asking me, the ones that just get like root root Mm touch-ups, they would ask me for color and I resisted for a long time. I'm like, just wait, it's fine. It's fine. But then once obviously we realized this is going on for a long time um, and I would give them color when I was able to see them again it wasn't good. Like it wasn't pretty, you know? And I think that that kind of gave me an appreciation and them an appreciation of what we really do. It's not just the hair color. It's not just the blow dryer. It's not, it's not these tools that we use. It's really us, you know, that are making it good. A lot more became that, right? Mm -hmm. They did. They did. Mm -hmm. And especially it really depended on how you um, stay connected to your guests during that shutdown. That was really, really important. I found that they um, appreciated the fact that I would reach out. Mm-hmm. They just appreciated any form of connection. Like they felt they didn't want to feel abandoned and I didn't want them to feel abandoned. Mm-hmm. You know, so, what were yeah. you doing? Did you use social media? Were you emailing or calling? 
I did email, yep, I did newsletters, but I picked up the phone from my older ladies who I know weren't gonna get the email. So I would call Liz and I would call Cynthia and they would call me and, I, and they have my cell phone number. I know a lot of people teach to not having um, the number, but I need that touchy feely. I know how to balance it. I, well, I try. I, you know, have office hours, but during the shutdown, it felt like all bets were off, you know? I created a Facebook group that was just for them. And I would pop in and do lives and answer questions and just say, hi. And they were always so excited to see me. And I was so excited to see them. And then I created um, hydration hair care kits with the products that I use. And so I would package it. And I was like a little Santa Claus. I would drive over to the house and put the baggie on the, um, on the doorstep and it had candies and a little treat in there for them. And, um, and, and instructions, and then they would FaceTime me or they, we would do a Zoom call and I would instruct them on what to do because it was tough. Like you said, when you started off, it was like, okay, just wait, maybe two or three weeks. Right. <laughs> Listen, after the second uh, 30 days, it's like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. You, know, you had to do something different. You had to, I just, I wanted them to still feel me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have... Um, a space of time where they felt like I wasn't there mm -hmm. and that they were just on their own until they saw me again and no one knew when that would be. So exactly. there was no, there was no um, loss of time in between us when we got back together. It was just like, ha ha, <laughs> and we were so excited to see each other. <laughs> and I had goodies for them when they came yeah. back. <laughs> so it was fun. Oh my gosh, that is, that is really special. I mean, that is above and beyond really, but I think it's really important what you said you know, people coach to this or coach to this and how you work your boundaries, but everyone's boundaries are different, you know? Right. And if you feel good about what you're doing and what you're giving. Right. Just to say right. that's wrong. I know how to set limits. You know, uh, 20 years ago, I didn't. 20 mm -hmm. years ago it was tough. You know, I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know my, that I had a voice. I just took any customer who wanted to serve, you know, wanted me to do their hair. I did it, even if they were making me miserable. But today, wow, I tell you, it's nice to grow up. <laughs> it's nice to grow up and understand that you do have a voice and that you mm -hmm. can set limits and boundaries and, and you can enforce your policies. Mm -hmm. You can create and enforce your policies and they make you better. And then the guests appreciate you. Everyone around you appreciates when you, you know, take the time to create what you need to work and run an effective business. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I have a standalone business right now, but I still have a business on it. It never leaves me. It just, it just never leaves me. Even before I had my own salon, I was my own business. Yep. I never, it didn't take coaching for me to realize that I was in control of, you know, the kind of clientele I had. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I intentionally knew, I know I didn't know about a target market Right. But I think that like attracts like, and I've always just been blessed to have really good people. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you'd have the ones that you'd have to, you know, you realize they aren't for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that was okay. That was okay. Everything's a lesson to learn. So. Any advice on, like you said, sometimes you don't get past the consultation. Any advice on how you um, gently decline them coming in, I guess? Well, it just depends on, so most times I'll say something like, um, it's been, I just, I don't think we're a good fit. I think that what you need and what I can give you aren't going to fit, aren't going to work together. Um, I can either refer you to someone else or um, you can find them on your own, but I have a lot of uh, good people that I can refer to you um, if you're interested, but I give the other person a heads up. But if they're really nasty, I just say, no, I just don't think we're going to be a good fit because I wouldn't want to put a problem on a friend. Right. I just tell them that we're not a good fit and that it's okay. You know, not everything is, you know, not everyone is supposed to work well together and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I wish them well. Bless and release is what I do. <laughs> I like that. Bless and release. Yes. <laughs> good one. yes. Right. It takes me a long time to do it. I'm getting better with blessing and releasing because I, it steals my peace and I don't, I love my peace. Mm -hmm. I love my peace. And when I have someone who um, is challenging that, I'm quicker to release than I used to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I've 
found that too. And, and it may just come with practice, growth, age, but mm-hmm. um, okay. it feels icky in the mm-hmm. moment, but in the long run, you're so much better for it. Mm-hmm. My heart would get involved. I, I needed to put my business mind on or my business hat on more than my heart hat. My heart hat wanted to see the good in them. My heart hat wanted to say, well, maybe they're just, and as you get older, everything you said, as you get older, you get wiser, you should, <laughs> and you just have to know that, no, not today. Yeah, because it does, today. even though you want to, like, separate work and home, that shit comes home with you. It you does. Know? And it that does. that one client that is just not the dream, and they might not even, sometimes you have those sneaky ones where you don't realize that they're just not quite right, but then you yeah. get home, and your kids say something, and you snap, yeah. and it's just, right. it's not worth it. Yeah. I held on to a couple of customers for far too long. And when I had the opportunity to let them go, they talked themselves out of it and talked themselves back into my chair and, and talked me into another chance. And when I tell you the second go round was even more miserable than the first, <laughs> Lord. So once it was out that, but that again, that was a lesson. Lesson learned. It was a mm-hmm. lesson because my gut said it was over the first time. My heart let them back in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you grow grow and you learn. Any (laughs) advice for um, those just getting into the industry or thinking about going to cosmetology school? Yes, do it. This is the best industry in the world to be in. Like you really get to work with your friends, serve your your people. Like they feel like they're your friends, whether they are or not, you decide if you're your guests or your friends. To me, they're my friends and my family. That's Mm -hmm. just me. Um, but you got to be at a place where you, again, those boundaries and you know how to set the boundaries to be able to allow certain, a certain part of that into your life, you know, but, um, find a mentor today. It's not so hard. Find someone to grow under. Mm -hmm. Don't, uh, be so quick to get out on your own, um, and miss all the opportunities to learn and grow because it's going to set you up It's a serious foundation and you need that foundation because it's not going to always be flowers and butterflies in this industry. There's so much fun to have, but there's a time when it gets a little real Mm -hmm. and you need that foundational, um, that foundation set properly. So find a mentor, learn as much as you can learn, do everything, do everything for a while and then decide if you want to specialize. But at least you'll know, you'll have, you'll taste it so much and you'll decide and you'll know for for sure what you really want to do, what really lights you up. You know, it took me too long to figure it out, but it's okay. It's okay. But just never stop learning, never stop growing. One of my favorite um, uh, African proverbs is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It's true. When you're ready, everything that you need will be there for you. Keep an open mind, keep growing, do well in school, pay attention and come out ready to work. Come out ready to work and have fun. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you on social media? So I'm at Be Chic with Baina. So that's Baina is spelled. So Be Chic, B as in boy, um, H, (laughs) B as in boy, C, H, I, C, with Baina. Baina is spelled B as in boy, A, Y, Y, I, N as in Nancy, A, H. And that's on Instagram and on Facebook. And I'm currently excited about a little program that I'm working on. Yeah. Um, I call it the, the ultimate guest experience where I'm working on an academy to create a program to help stylists and salon owners um, master the guest experience so that they, they can keep the clients that are in their chairs and make them want to tell everyone about them, you know, and kind of, it kind of brings back that um, 1990s vibe of referrals that that word of mouth I'm getting a lot more word of mouth Mm -hmm. um and not just the funnel with you know through social media so you can find me there that's why I'll be waiting to say hello congratulations that is exciting and that is going to be huge value so everybody look out for that for sure thank you so much it's necessary and it's needed I don't think it's um that we're doing it enough Mm -hmm. I don't think that the guest is feeling as loved and welcomed and I really want to help change that I love it. Perfect. I'll link everything so people can okay. see you. Thank you Thank so you much for so having me. It was so much fun. Thank you so much.
so much for tuning into this episode. If you liked it, and I know you did, please don't forget to leave a five-star review. I love hearing from other stylists, so take a screenshot of the episode and tag me in it at Mindful Hair by Emily. If you have a story to share and would like to be on a future episode, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you guys next Monday with more Stories with Stylists.